Hello everyone! Your boy Shinko no Katsura here and today we're going over PK Fire Burning Abyss Phantom Knights 2019 40 card deck profile budget style. Here we go. Alright, so when I say budget I mean I spent a little less than 30 getting everything to finish off the deck. By that I mean I bought three legendary hero decks. That was the main purchase. Um, everything else I traded for the bunch of guys at my local game shop, uh, Mystical Mayhem. And I was able to get some stuff off of them for pretty cheap. Um, and since I retained most of my hand traps that I traded for it, I'm not going to count that as a loss. I think all in all, there might be fifty to one hundred dollars worth of cards in the deck total. So budget if you're a budget player, but still really good. So here we are getting into it. We run one copy of our boy gloves because he makes the ranks and makes them better. Then we run two copies of cloak. Ancient cloak to grab boots if we send him to the graveyard and he's a great like they have something huge the dirt type has okay defense way too much attack you can't beat over it cloak will help cloak helps a lot and of course we are running three copies of the phantom knight boots boots is great because boots is special summoned just by having another Phantom Knight monster, so that's another link. That's another rank three. That plays off of Bardiche. And once you're done there, you just send to the graveyard pitch it, you got a fog blade. Alright, so moving on to the next set, we have our honorary Burning Abyss to quote Kelly Effect. Now these are the honorary Burning Abyss monsters because while they're not Burning Abyss, Burning Abyss does so much better with these cards. And that is our one tour guide of the Burning Abyss. She's really good. Really strong card. Normal summon her just special. Any of your Dark Fiend type monsters from the deck. Their effects negated so they're not gonna pop. You go into your Dante. You go into your Break Sword. Link them away into Cherry Beanie. Do whatever you want. Make a pasta. Who cares? Point is she helps make plays. And she's a dark type, which is really good. Considering our next boy is, boom, three copies of the Finnish Rhino Warrior. Now he is a great search. When he dies, he brings someone from your deck with him. So all of our fan, all of our Burning Abyss boys have graveyard effects. So Rhino goes, and just send whatever you want alongside him. You send your scar, and you get your toy guy at the end, and you get get. By the way, Toy Guide is our most common Skarm target for search. If you haven't played her yet, and she's not in your hand, Skarm her out. Alright, moving on, we have two copies of Farfa. Farfa is really good for those really, really fun lockdown plays. Um, I don't have Trisbania yet, but um, Farfa is a really fun Trisbania lock card. You get Farfa to the graveyard, you just bounce your spin, you, you make it a cease monster, you bring your spin you back under the other zone. And what is your opponent gonna do? They gotta summon their extra monster there to that zone, and your spin you goes, no, stop it. So, Farfa just been in a soft lock. Gotta play that risk reward game here, guys. I don't have just been here yet, but I'm getting I'm gonna get one ASAP. Up next, as I mentioned, two Skarm. He is our search guy. Pitch him to the graveyard. Search at the end phase. Gets toy guide. Makes our recovery plays. Next, we are running two copies of Libic. And Libic, you special summon one. Level 3 Dark Fiend type monster from your hand. That's really strong. Cause that's another Burning Abyss that you didn't use the Burning Abyss special ability for. So you still have your graveyard effect. So Libic makes some pretty good plays after he's gone. 
Uh, we are now on to our runoffs for the uh, Burning the Base guys. Some of them are run because we only need one. Some are one because we can only have one. We run one copy of Bar Bar. And uh, Bar Bar runs the scent to the graveyard. You can. Sorry. What does Bye Bye do? Sorry, let me read a second. Oh yeah, Bye Bye is our uh, burn one. Yeah, banish three burning abyss monsters. To bring your opponent for 300 for each one. I don't know why it took me so long to read and realize that. I feel really dumb. Of course, we have our boy Seer. Seer is really strong. Seer just goes, hey, guess what? We're bringing it back. So, Seer bring back Dante. Dante brings Seer back to hand. Seer bring back Dante. You get that Seer Dante loop going, and it's just too strong. We have our one graph. Graph, of course, is our resurrection card, you know, special summon a burning abyss from the, oh, he summons from the deck, Seer's the resurrector. So Graph pulls something from the deck, again, you're avoiding that special summon cost, you got a monster on the field. If you play it right, you can summon something for the pure intention of blowing it up, getting in the graveyard. To pitch for Seer to make all sorts of really jank fun plays. I know I did it once where I um I used Graft to special summon a monster under my Trapologic Bomber Dragon and knowing Trapologic was gonna blow up the field I set my creature let it die by its own effect Bomber still goes off, took out everything else on the board, swung in hard. Anyway, then we have Cow Cap, and Cow Cap says no to back row. Cow Cap hits grave, I just send a back row card. That's the little I'll it. Moving on, we have our hand traps. We run two Valor, just because effect cards are so heavy in the meta right now. We run. To Ash Blossom because I am so sick of seeing people go into their decks five times a turn, five times a duel. Like I wish I had Drolls to pop in here, just because Droll Unlock is a really good stopping force card. Uh, we run two Ghost Bell because Salaman Greats are a really big threat right now, and this helps stop them, stop Orcus, stop some of the rare matches even. Because what you gonna do? I got ghost spell. What you got? You ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. Home salazzle. That's right. Moving on to our traps. We run one copy of Phantom Knight Wings. This gives the monster 800, no, 500 additional attack. And for that turn, the first time it would be destroyed, it is not. So this card on top of any monster with self-protection abilities is really, really strong. Because, oh, Wings Protect, oh, Cherry Beanie, Pop, whatever, you know. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bacon, I don't know. But it's really good. And, you pitch it from your graveyard, you get a Phantom Knight monster back. More plays! Same with the Phantom Knight Sword, except for it acts more like an equipment card. Because this one just stays on the field and it gives 800... Yeah, 800 attack! And if it would be just if the target would be destroyed, you just pop your sword! Bada bing bada boom! Same thing, you get back a Phantom of Night though. I don't know why I'm talking like this. Moving on, we run three copies of the Phantom Knight's Fog Blade. With this card, 
you say no to your opponent doing whatever they were trying to do. Your opponent's gonna go for that Dingarisu? No. Fogblade. Sorry. We're done here. You're gonna go for that Gigari play? Nope. You're gonna go for that Shizuku? Nope. You're gonna go for that Sunlight Heat Leo Wolf combo? Nope. And they can't attack. Sure, you can't attack it. But we don't really care about that last thing. We have victory conditions in our deck. We have raised around this. In fact, half the time this card, we don't really care. But look, okay, cool. I locked out your monster. I'm just gonna go do something over here now. Hold still. Moving on, we got our spells. Our run ups are one, foolish burial, because throwing all monsters in the graveyard is a fun thing to do. Throw your opponent off guard. They don't know what's coming. You don't know what's coming. Nobody knows what's coming. You throw down the foolish burial because what the heck are you playing? And ain't nobody gonna know. Unless, you know, you throw it down late duel, and then they're probably going to try and ash it. Then you've got your one copy of the OG Monster Reborn. Chaos is an OG, it's from the hero deck, but hey, who's the dog in here? And then you've got your reinforcement of the army, because all of your phantom knights are warrior types. We did run the Armageddon build, but we took that out, because it just wasn't playing right. And up next we have three copies of Twin Twister from the hero pack. Rarity buff on your guys because you just have to make it look like you spend money on this card game sometimes even though you really didn't. And I've totally skewed the camera. There, okay. So, three copies of Twin Twister. The discard cost does not mean a thing to us. We're playing Burning Abyss. We're playing Phantom Knights. Our stuff is meant to be played from the graveyard. We don't care about discard for cost. That's how we make our plays. And of course, finally, three called by the graves because we don't like hand traps. A single hand trap stops us. You, you go to do something and we say no. It's also good if you're up against counter phase and they play honest and you call by the graves the honest. Like, what you got? What you got now? You didn't got nothing. Alright, moving on to the extra deck. The archives we will be taking out, others we will be adding in, so stay tuned. But we are running one copy of Pilgrim, and he is not brought out in the conventional ways, he is brought out through Beatrice, which is actually the conventional way, ignore what I said. Really good card here, because he just, you just either turn your picture card, you draw a card. Nah, uh, D, you throw in the graveyard when you're burning abyss monsters. You got another card! And hey, who's gonna stop you? You're throwing something away, they don't know what it is. You throw away a Farfar, you banish one of their monsters for their turn, they're not gonna make it to place. And it's a quick effect, so they swing into attack, you banish, you're good to go, you draw that card, you sit there, you wait, you watch them kind of cry. And if they kill this, I don't remember what it does. I'm sure it does something awesome. Oh yeah, they kill this, you send a card from their hand to the graveyard. They don't discard it, you send it. That's important ruling. Really strong. And the lady who brings him back from hell! Lady Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal Burning Ab... Lady of the Eternal, sorry, I thought it was Total Burning Abyss. Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal, not a Burning Abyss monster, so be careful making your plays. But she's real good because you exceed her over a Dante. You can make her over a Pilgrim if you really want to, I'm not sure why you would. You make her over a pilgrim. You make her over Dante. All you gotta do is throw away a burning abyss monster. And we got those for days. And then she just sits there like, lol, do something. Like, you can discard a card to foolish something from your deck during either player's turn. You pitch Farfa 
Banish. Pitch Sir. Bring back whatever the heck you feel like. And you're sitting on a good next turn and play. Speaking of Dante's, we run two Dante. Detach one. <coughs> mm, excuse me. You detach one. You mill three. You gain 500 attack for each card you mill. So you detach one to send three cards to the graveyard in a deck that plays in the graveyard to become a 25 beat stick that automatically goes to defense after battle phase. Do not end your first turn on a Dante though. Trust me. And on a Beatrice if you have to. And moving on, we are also running to the Phantom Knight Breaksword, just for consistency sake. Breaksword is really good because you hit Breaksword, Breaksword dies, you bring back two Phantom Knights from your grave, and they're now level 4. That's important. Um, you banish too much stuff, you need something back, you've got Levier the Sea Dragon. Really simple to make. And you can just, after you're done using him, you get your banish stuff back. You can literally just use him to make a link. He's he's link fodder after that. Anyway, the reason why Break Sword is so important is because we are running one copy of Requiem XYZ Dark Dragon. I don't know why it's the darkness. It's Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon. Yeah, Requiem is the five, and we don't have any magic anymore, so we don't talk about that one. But this guy, first, either two lo just two level four monsters, which Break Sword gives us. Breaksword gives us two level fours, because you're most likely making Breaksword with gloves and boots. Gloves, boots, Breaksword, Requiem, Smack. That is a combo. Especially if they have like one monster on board. You Requiem Dragon, you take half that monster's attack power, and then you punch it on the face because now you know you're bigger than it. Anyway, moving on to our Link Monsters. We have, of course, Cherubini, Ebony, Angel of the Burning Abyss. Two dark monsters. You get your Cherubini. Your Cherubini protects the Burning Abyss monsters that it points to. They cannot be destroyed by card effects. So, you bring out Cherubini, you get whatever you want here and here. You could blow up the field doing whatever crazy shenanigans you want to do. Those two monsters will not move. They will stay there until the end of time. Or until they're like killed by battle. And then, if you want to make your chair being stronger, you send literally any Burning Abyss monster from your deck. More plays are being made here. She gets a boost. She's about to die. Pop any of your cards. Monsters. Back row. You have a card taking up space because you need to beat over their monster. Activate some jink effect to try and pop Cherry Bini. Pop your fog blade, kill their monster. I've done it. Anyway, moving on. I'm actually gonna move on to you, my dude. One Phantom Knight's Rusty Bardish. If I have to tell you what this does, which I'm going to anyway, but hopefully you already know. Phantom Knight plus C Bardish. You summon a dark Xyz monster to one of his zones. You pop one of your opponent's cards. Really strong. You send a Phantom Knight monster to the graveyard to set a fog blade. That's not literally the text. The literal text is spell or trap. Fog blade. Bardish equals a free fog blade. And whatever monster you just sent probably equals another free fog blade. Moving on from him. <coughs> Excuse me. Tropologic Bomber Dragon. I picked this up instead of just video because I'm an idiot. All I wrote was Tropologic on the guide. And so here we are. Bomber Dragon. Still pretty cool. Not as strong. Um, but if a monster is special summoned to a zone he points to, he blows up the field. If he battles a monster, your opponent takes 
damage equal to the attack of the original attack. To the original monster's original attack. There we go. So they have something. And... You can't destroy it. You can't beat over it. You can't whatever for whatever reason. But it is a beast. In the attack point division. Literally throw your bomber dragon at it. In a kamikaze. You will take a little bit. They will take their monster's full attack power to the face. Because it just has to... At... Yeah, after, after damage, if you get attacked to an opponent's monster, inflict damage. Battle declaration of attack. Damage calculation. One of the monsters gets destroyed, or both. So, boom, that small sliver of pie right there. Right before Bomb Dragon is destroyed, he goes, blah, surprise. Some fries, I don't know. Up next, we have the Borlo Dragon. This thing is really fun. I like it. I need a Borlo Sword. Um, that's another card I'm going to add. Just bending and Borlo Sword. Those are getting added as soon as I get them. Um, this monster. Target one face of monster, it loses 500 attack. Like, that is helpful. Because this is a 3k attacker. Not a lot of things are going to look at losing 500 of their attack. And still attack a 3k attacker. But then, you swing into anything once per turn. You take control of it. They've got a big beefy buff due to beefiness. You attack their monster, you get control of their monster, it goes at the end of turn. At the end of the next turn, it goes. That's what happens. Borlode says bye. Borlode's like, bye Felicia. Old school movie references for those of you out there who are like, not familiar with them. Anyway, and then, you have their monster to attack with. You swing this into a max dragon. And swiper no swiping that thing. And since Max Dragon can't be destroyed by card effects, it does not go. It stays. You have a Max Dragon. I just realized this. So, Chaos Max Dragon isn't really something you have to deal with that often. <coughs> but other such monsters that are like, cannot be destroyed? Bomber Dragon. Play some freaking bomber man up in there and show them who's boss. This is boy load, not bomber dragon. Anyway, after that, I don't know why, but I'm playing underclock. It target one face of monster this code point is two. And one face of monster your opponent controls. Opponent monster loses his attack equal to the attack of the targeted monster this code points to. That actually like kinda of understand why I'm playing that now. It actually has some pretty good strengths. They anyway, went moving on. Hello. We have Nightmare Phoenix. What's Nightmare Phoenix? Well, I think we all know what Nightmare Phoenix says, but we're gonna take that out to be a bowl sword. Because Why are you work? Did you not read your text? Anyway. So Nightmare Phoenix is there. Not all that important because I don't have the rest of the package. I'm actually going to get the rest of the package for a different deck, which I will do once it is done. So look forward to that. I'll tell you about it in a moment. Big Cup from the Underworlds is our final extra deck monster. Again, two dark monsters. You put up a 12 token, so she acts like a little bit <coughs> more generic, less powerful Chiribini. So if you attack powers over... Abilities, patrol cop, or big cop. The only downside is you have to sacrifice a monster in order to get a patrol counter on something. But again, we are playing Burning Abyss. So, should you have to go into big cop, you can sack a Burning Abyss monster or a Phantom Knight, get some patrol counters out, patrol counter on a break sword, 
Pop breaks sword for his ability, and the patrol counter goes instead. You just freely pop something on your opponent's side of the field. How nuts is that? Anyway, this has been my Burning Abyss deck profile. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down in the comment section if you think I need to post stuff more often. And I will catch you guys next time.